everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to explain why you shouldn't really use the hybrid cache that came out in .NET 9, even though it didn't really come out in .NET 9, the abstraction came out, but the actual thing isn't out yet, and we don't really know when it's going to be out, and you should be using something else instead, which is way better in my opinion, given what we know and what we have right now. Now, will hybrid cache in the future be good enough to be used? Probably. I mean, it is by Microsoft, which doesn't really necessarily mean much, but it is the built-in thing that most people will run to use. But you don't have to wait for it to be out, and you should use something else instead. And that something else is a library called Fusion Cache. Now, why am I saying that? Because Fusion Cache has been out for a very long time. And what is Fusion Cache even? So Fusion Cache, if we go into NuGet and we search for Fusion Cache, you can find under ziggycreatures.fusioncache, is a library that basically does exactly what hybrid cache is doing. In fact, the name hybrid cache was recommended by the author of Fusion Cache. It's L1 plus L2 caching, which means you have your in-memory cache and you can actually then push that cache into a distributed cache like Redis if you want to scale your application. And fun fact, on DomeTrain, we are using Fusion Cache. It's one of the core technologies I have to optimize our APIs and applications in the backend because it is just so good. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that I'm running two online workshops at the end of February. Link in the description on the first 20 of you that get tickets can get 20% off using discount code WORKSHOP20. There's some awesome two-day workshops about testing and then about building distributed systems with Dot and Aspire, so you don't want to miss them. These are normally what I run in conferences around the world, but this time I'm running them online. I'll be there for two days teaching you everything you need to know about these two topics. Now back to the video. So why should you use this over hybrid cache? Well, for you know starters, you can't really use hybrid cache for now it is not really out. You see all these demos talking about add hybrid cache. This doesn't exist. Yes, you can say, but Nick, go here and search for Microsoft.extensions.caching.hybrid cache, and you won't actually find anything. And that's because it is still in preview. The latest version is 9.1.0 and then preview one. I'm suspecting this will come out whenever .NET 9.1 is out, whether that's ever going to be out as an individual version or just a package version. But you'd have to install that to even get those benefits. And even then, as you can see, this doesn't compile because you have to go ahead and allow this method, suppress this warning and allow this method to be used because Microsoft just hasn't finished the work on this. Now, the concept of fusion caching or hybrid caching is very powerful because you can add tons of features around the context of hybrid caching by having that locally stored cache and then the distributed cache. And you can have things like fail safes, you can have things like retries, timeouts. There's some great things that you can have once you have something like this. But we don't really have this package and we don't really need it because we can use Fusion Cache. Now, assume I have this API call over here where I'm calling this weather API to get the weather for a city and a country. So if I went to just quickly run this API and I went to Insomnia to call it, if I say I want the weather for London, UK, and I call this API, I'm going to get the current weather. Now, the weather doesn't really change that often. I've made that joke many times. Yes, in London, it changes every minute. Okay. But you can have like Paris, France, and you can have different weather and so on. And you don't want to be calling that rate limited API all the time. That takes some seconds or some milliseconds to respond back. Wouldn't it be better to just cache this response and keep using it either from local cache or distributed cache? And the answer is yes. And the way you can implement caching like this is with the old memory cache or distributed cache. But actually what I recommend and what I use is the Fusion Cache library, which by the way is an open source library. I highly recommend you to check the link in the description down below and you give it a star on GitHub. Packages and authors like this can use all the stars we can get. So you can have something like that. And the way you can implement it is by just searching for Fusion Cache and adding the Fusion Cache package. And you can actually also add this realization package as well, because we're going to use a real distributed cache. In this case, I'm going to use Redis, as you can see over here, which I'm running in Docker. So now that I have this, I can say builder.services.add Fusion Cache. And I can say that I want to use a distributed cache. Now for this to work, I also need to add the mechanism of the caching. So I'm going to search for Microsoft extensions caching dot stack exchange over here, install this package. And now this will allow me 
to say new Redis cache. I can then configure it over here. That's the address that Redis is running on. And now I can have this in-memory cache and this distributed cache. Now I will need to configure something like the serializer. So I'm going to say new serializer. So I'm going to say use new fusion cache system serializer, which is the system.text.json one. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to add some default uh, entry settings for my cache. And I want to say that the default duration for anything I cache is five minutes. So I'm going to cache the weather for five minutes. Now, if I wanted to implement this over here, I would say private read only I Fusion Cache and then use the Fusion Cache at library integration directly in this method. But I'm actually not going to do this because Fusion Cache is the first library, yes, even before Microsoft, that has a production ready, feature complete hybrid cache solution. So if you go over here in the end and you say as hybrid cache, then what this allows you to do is it allows you to inject the private read only hybrid cache abstraction which exists in .NET. You don't need to include any NuGet package for it and then you can just go ahead and install that. And then this means that if I have a call like this, I can go and say I want to have a cache key over here. I'm going to say that it's going to look like weather and then I'm going to have the city or country over here and I'm going to say return await hybrid cache get or create async. I'm going to have the key over here and then I'm going to have the delegate, so the async method that gives me the weather for the given city or country. Here we go. Now, this won't work because I need to specify that this is a weather response, which is nullable. And I'm going to say, I wait here. But, but once I do that, then I just, like this, implemented caching, distributed caching on my application. If I just go ahead and I run this and I go and I say, on Insomnia actually, just get the weather for Paris. Then if I go on Redis and I refresh this, then you can see that they have my cache entry for weather Paris. And if I go here and I put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here, and I call this method again, then as you would expect, I'm going to hit the breakpoint, but I'm not actually going to call this get weather async method because it's returning the value from the cache. If I went ahead and I just deleted this entry and I try to call this again, then it will actually go here and call that method, which will then recache this value. So you might say, okay, Nick, you said don't use a hybrid cache, but you're actually using a hybrid cache. No, I'm using the abstraction, but the abstraction itself, this is just an abstract class. It doesn't have any implementation. The implementation is purely on hybrid cache. Now, why is this important? This is important because this finally allows you to do tag base cache invalidation, which is massive. Being able to tag a cache entry, let's say, for example, here that this thing has a cache tag, which is called the weather. So I just cached a weather is incredibly useful. And yeah, you can say you can delete everything that starts with a specific key. But what if these entries have different types of caching? You have the weather as a tag, then you have something else and something else, and you mixing tags between cache entries. There's no way to just, or just no obvious efficient way to just say delete all the tags, both locally and on the distributed cache, because of how caching and tagging works on Redis and on other distributed cache technologies. But this is not a problem here, because as you're going to see if I stick breakpoints here and I just go ahead and I debug it, and I say, okay, cache the weather for Paris, this will go ahead and just call the actual service and cache the weather. And if I refresh, now we have more things. We have the tags, as you can see over here in the text, for the weather. And not only that, but we can actually now also invalidate that cache, but in a very efficient way. Even if you have millions of entries, you don't have to wait for millions of operations for the invalidation. I have another endpoint that allows you to just pass down over here. In fact, I don't have it yet, but I'm going to add it. But it's an endpoint that allows you to just pass down a tag and then invalidate something with that tag. So the cache entry still exists and this is still using the hybrid cache. But now if you see the entry exists, but if I go here and I say clear the cache for weather, anything tagged like weather, then it's going to go in here, say OK, and the cache is invalidated which means you would expect that if I go on Redis and I refresh, this won't exist anymore. But that's not the case. This still exists and it's alive and well. The TTL is still going down, the entry is still here. However, now I have this thing over here, which is an entry managed by Fusion Cache that keeps track 
of all the invalidations for the cache. If you've requested an invalidation for the cache, this is stored here on that key, the key being the weather and then the prefix. So if I go and I stick a breakpoint again over here, which I never removed, and I call the API again, what you'd expect is the cache entry to be returned because it exists. But actually this isn't going to happen. If I say send and I say a five, this will actually go and get the latest value of the weather. And it's not going to return the cache value. If I call it again, then it is actually going to get the value from the cache because I never invalidated it. And if I go and I say remove it again and I call it again, then as you can see, we're getting it again, which is insane that this has been implemented. This will make my life, I know, extremely, extremely easier but also the way it's implemented is genius because by doing it that way with a marker that says that's when you requested this elimination of the cache or invalidation, you don't have to scan Redis and say delete everything from a distributed cluster that can be extremely, extremely hard to do and hard to do deterministically as well across many nodes hosting this data. In this way, all you do is you just keep a timestamp that is the value of when the invalidation was requested and then the Fusion Cache library knows in itself how to handle it. And you also have a clear method. So if you want to just clear the cache, you can also do that as well. Of course, you can still remove or remove by tag or set async. All of that still works and all of that works with the hybrid cache API. Now, of course, it does mean that if you want more finer control, because ultimately hybrid cache is a abstraction and it's not everything that Fusion Cache can do, even though it's it's a lot of what it can do, you can still use Fusion Cache directly over here, which allows you to do tons of things. And these all just yeah, clear or clear async, just delete everything without actually deleting the entries. Extremely, extremely smart stuff. If you're using caching on .NET, even in production, and there's some massive clients that have already upgraded to this library, I highly recommend you use Fusion Cache. It is just an amazing library and it's only going to get better. Yes, Microsoft will come out with something eventually, but I don't know if it's going to be that good. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And have you implemented tag-based caching in the past? How have you implemented it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.